Do you think going to bed at 1am is good for you? Or do you think that you're a night owl? Or that you can survive sleeping 4 or 5 hours during the week? There is nothing like night owl. And when you are at your best during the night and you feel groggy during the day, it means that you have dysfunctional circadian rhythm and unbalanced hormones. Your body simply produces much more cortisol at night and production of melatonin is lower than it should be, which is very important anti-cancer hormone. So what are the other risks of staying up late? Before we figure out the risks, if you're new here, consider subscribing and welcome to our channel. We do Mythbusters and health tip, trick and hack videos just like this one every week. up late are more likely to have cardiovascular diseases, heart diseases, type 2 diabetes, gain weight or even incur longevity. Also, sleep deprivation very often leads to depression and depression, stress and anxiety leads to sleeping disorders. And also when you get out of your consistent sleep schedule and in addition to that cannot manage your stress levels, your body starts to go downhill very fast. Lack of sleep is attributed to weight loss problems because of heightened levels of cortisol and estrogen levels. If you don't get enough sleep, you cannot regulate your blood sugar levels, burn fat, and in addition to that, you're not able to take advantage of your anabolic stage and then rebuild and recover at night. So why sleep is so important? Number one, digestion and detoxification. First and foremost, proper rest during the night allows our body to clean the house. You give the body the time to finally absorb the nutrients from the food you ate during the course of the day and then you ensure it excretes any unwanted material next morning with effective bowel movement. This happens because the liver is doing its work, which is detoxification. And in addition to that, when you have torn muscles or damaged cell membranes, when you're sleeping, your body enters an anabolic stage, which helps you rebuild these torn muscles or regenerate the damaged cells. And in some instances, our body is amazing. It takes out all of the waste and even kills some of your cancer cells. But what about our brain? Do we need to clean our brain like we cleanse the whole body? Our brain, just like every other organ, has two agendas. One, how does it obtain the right amount of nutrients? And two, how does it get rid of the waste it produces? So we know that the circulatory system provides our body with the nutrients it needs. And the lymphatic system, on the other hand, helps us detoxify and remove waste from our body. But when you look at the lymphatic system in our body, you can easily see that it doesn't spread to our brain. There is no lymph vessels in our brain. Interesting, See, huh? huh? What is more, the activity of our brain uses up up to a quarter of the whole body's energy supply, even if the brain is only 2% of our body mass. You can imagine, if brain takes a quarter of what we provide daily, it has to generate a lot of waste. So, you might ask what this waste is. It's simply a protein called a myeloid beta. So how does it get removed? The brain is surrounded by a large pool of clean and clear fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. Moving forward, I'm gonna call it CFS because it's a mouthful. This fluid fills up the space between your brain and your skull and absorbs any waste and then transfers it back to the blood so that it could get excreted. Okay, here comes a crucial part of the story. CSF can be only activated when we sleep. During the day when we are fully awakened, there is no CSF in our brain tissue. It means that worsening sleep quality and duration of sleep is associated with a greater amount of amyloid beta built up in the brain. What was further proven is that when you are not able to excrete the waste that's been produced by the brain, it's been linked to diseases like Alzheimer's. We've linked some of the research associated with these studies down in the description below. Let us now share with you how a proper sleep cycle should look like and what are the impacts of hormones on a sleep cycle. Sleep is a master regulator of our hormone, if you didn't know this before. I can give you an example from my own life. As you probably know from our previous video, I had a problem with hormonal acne, which I couldn't get rid of using any ointments and medications and antibiotics, etc. Only when I started to sleep regularly and going to bed earlier, I resolved the problem. Unfortunately, sleep is the most undervalued factor of health, which I admit I neglected in the past. So how does a sleep cycle and hormones work together? Let's start with the evening. 
After 8 p.m., your cortisol levels, which is your stress hormones, fall, and your melatonin, aka the calm hormone, rises, giving your body the signal to get ready to sleep. Whereas on the other side of the day, when the sun rises, hormone production of cortisol rises and your melatonin falls as the skin receptors absorb the light from the sun. Ultimately, you get a surge of hormones apart from melatonin, even including growth hormone from your thyroids. Your hormones naturally wakes you up around 7, 8 a.m. If you don't wake up around this time in the morning, you miss a lot of natural energy our body produces and most likely you will be very groggy. Around afternoon, cortisol drops and it's half of what it was in the morning and around 9 p.m. it's as its lowest and it's a sign that we should go to the bed. Be careful! You know that feeling where you just knock off and then you feel as if you've just been woken up and you have a surge of energy? That is a second wind of hormones just after around 10 p.m. Okay, that's hormones and now let's talk about circadian rhythm. We should work with the natural rhythm of the body. Remember, it's not about how long you sleep. It's about what time you go to bed and wake up. And secondly, the quality. In conclusion, if you stay up late and consequently get four or five hours of sleep, you end up disrupting your hormones. And in addition, if you try and catch up sleep over the course of the weekend, you continue to disrupt this even further. We know probably you might be thinking that it's enough to survive. But guys, it's not about surviving, but... It's about thriving. So why you cannot fall asleep? Actually, it's deeply rooted in endocrinology and biochemistry. If you don't want to geek out, please skip to the end of this video. To answer this question, we need to understand the relation between your sleep and cortisol and adrenaline. If you cannot easily fall asleep or cool your body down, it's most likely because of sympathetic nervous system dominance. So how do you check this? You could do this with a simple test by checking the ratio between magnesium and calcium. If when you look at the results, you see a heightened level of calcium and lower levels of magnesium, this means that the body has to deal with a higher level of stress. You might be thinking, hey, I got a lot of calcium. This should be good, right? None of our vitamins or minerals should be over or under. And at the same time, the storage of your magnesium probably will be depleted. So we have to work on additional intake of magnesium to your diet. Second reason, gut issues. Like for instance, a uh, yeast buildup in your gut. Why it is so important from sleep perspective? I don't know, Vera, tell us. Gut issues may affect a production of serotonin and GABA, which are known as natural anti-anxiety neurotransmitters, which are manufactured in your gut. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Remember that a good quality sleep is related with longevity and a reduced amount of diseases. Stay no longer and improve your sleep quality. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.